Hi kids, I'm Miss Booksy and this is Storytime. Today we're reading Alice in Wonderland. Chapter one, here we go. Wiggle, snap, story time. Oh, I'm Alice. Hi. So I was here trying my best not to be so bored, even though there was nothing to do but stare into space like this. When I noticed a little white rabbit this was no ordinary rabbit. He was wearing a suit and glasses and he was talking to himself. <laughs> it seems like he was late. A talking rabbit who could tell time? This wasn't boring at all. He rushed right past me saying, Oh dear, oh dear, I shall be late, oh dear. Well, this was just too curious. I must follow the white rabbit. Wow, this is so fun. <coughs> he slipped into a rabbit hole. So I did too. Whoa, but this was no ordinary rabbit hole. Ah, wait, I'm not really falling. I'm more like floating, like a feather. Cool. <laughs> wait, where am I? Whoa, did I fall all the way through the earth? Maybe I'm in Australia. <laughs> Good thing they speak English there. <laughs> hmm. A small key. But this key is way too small for any of these doors. Well, what do you know? There's a teensy door. Wow. That is amazing. Too bad this door's so small. I don't even think I could get my head through. And if I could, what good would my head be without the rest of me? <sighs> Hey, that wasn't there before. It says, drink me. Hmm, I know I'm not supposed to just drink things willy-nilly. What if it's poison? Or what if it's something just weird, like cauliflower juice? <laughs> hmm, it says here, definitely not poison and most certainly not cauliflower juice. Well, that's odd. Okay, I'll try just a sip. Mmm, mm, delicious! It tastes like everything I like. Cherry pie, ice cream, pineapples, roast turkey, French toast, mmm, pancakes, mmm. Oh, hey, hey, what's happening? Uh-oh, oh, I wonder if I shouldn't have tried that juice! How are they ever gonna get out of this one? Well, this is totally weird. But hey, now I can go into that garden. Oh no, the key is all the way up there at the table. That's as high as the Empire State Building now. Whoa, oh, there's a giant cookie. Well, if the drink made me smaller, maybe the cookie will make me bigger. Food does make you grow. <laughs> okay, here goes nothing. Mm hmm, nothing. Oh, oh, wait, I think, whoa! Well, this is not what I had in mind. Now I'm so big that I'm stuck. But it's good to know cookies are nutritious. Oh dear, I'm incredibly late. The queen simply will not tolerate this. Oh dear. Please, Mr. Rabbit, I'm stuck. I can't help you now. Didn't you hear me? I'm terribly late. But, but what if I'm stuck up here forever? It's really hot in here and I don't like being a giant. <laughs> Stop crying. I'll get all wet and ruin this new suit. I'm sorry, but this is just really uncomfortable. That's so sad. Ah, well, I'm leaving. Well, that's better at least. Wait, wait a second, I'm shrinking. Woohoo! <laughs> oh, oh no. Well, this isn't good. Ooh, interesting. Let's read another story, come on. Chapter two, here we go. Wiggle, snap, story time. Oh, luckily I'm a very good swimmer. <laughs> I took lessons at camp. <laughs> oh look, there's a friendly looking mouse. Yoo-hoo, Mousy, Mr. Mouse, do you know how to get to the beautiful garden with the Ferris wheel and the merry-go-round? Come on, follow me. Okay. 
soon we were joined by all sorts of small animals. A gang of baby ducks, a salamander, two frogs, and a hamster named Philip. <laughs> we swam and swam and swam, going right under the door and into the garden and downstream past flowers and crickets, caterpillars, and garden gnomes. That's so magical. When we finally got to dry land, I thought we would go play, or at least find a snack. <laughs> but the animals said they had to have an election, but they couldn't decide what they were voting on, and it got quite noisy. Oh look, there's the white rabbit. He was the one who led me down the rabbit hole, so he must know the way out. I chased after him, but I was too small for him to notice me. Oh, if only there was some more growing potion. And poof, just like magic, there was a little bottle right in my path. And it had a label on it that said, drink me, Alice. So I took a sip. Wow, nothing makes sense in Wonderland. And I grew. <laughs> what a relief. Oh, I'm me again. Not a great big giant and not a teeny tiny mouse. Oh, speaking of a tiny mouse, all of the small animals saw me suddenly grow larger and boy did that scare them. They all scattered away shrieking. Girlzilla! She's a giant! Sorry. Where's that darn rabbit this time? I'm looking for a rabbit. Are you looking for something? I found myself face to face with a giant caterpillar. Wait. Did I shrink again? You don't look shrunken to me. But why are you so large? And how did you learn to talk? That's a silly question. Are you silly? I don't think so. Well then, let's hear a poem. Excuse me? I'd like to hear a poem. One that rhymes, please. Um, okay, well, I never heard of a caterpillar who likes poetry, but here goes. <clears throat> this one is called The Queen of Hearts. The queen of hearts, she made some tarts all on a summer's day. The knave of hearts, he stole those tarts and took them clean away. The king of hearts called for the tarts and beat the knave full sore. The knave of hearts brought back the tarts and vowed he'd steal no more. OMG, I love it. How dare you accuse the knave of stealing the queen's tart? Don't you know the queen will stay off with his head? It's only a made-up poem. The queen of hearts isn't real. Shh! Of course the queen is real. And if she hears you say she isn't, she'll say off with your head. Oh no, but I like my head. It helps me think things and see things and smell things. And it has my hair on it. I really like my hair. <laughs> You're a traitor to the queen. Oh, this is a terrible misunderstanding. I, I, I wish I could shrink down so super tiny that I could just escape. Here, eat this. I gobbled up the cookie that he gave me and I grew taller, and taller, and taller, and I was very gigantic. Oh no, this doesn't look good. Hey, I want to be small so I could just hide from the queen. You made me even bigger. And you've turned rainbow colored, so you're very easy to spot. Oh, you caterpillar, I ought to step on you. That would be a crime, and the queen would say. Off with her head, yeah, yeah, I heard you the first time. Oh, how puzzling all these changes are. I'm never sure what I'm going to be from one minute to another. I've got to get back to looking like myself again, and I must get to that garden and ride the Ferris wheel at least once, and then I definitely, absolutely must get home in time for dinner. Oh, where's that rabbit? Let's go on another adventure, come on. Chapter three, here we go. Wiggle, snap, story time. Oh. I'm still all funny. Let's see, how do I get back to myself? Just good old Alice. Hey, there's that rabbit. Hey, rabbit. <laughs> hey, I'm talking here. Oh, there you are. There I am, but I've been looking for you. Marianne, you dreadful girl. Get back to work at once. Huh? 
Oh boy, worst assistant I've ever had. I think you have me confused with someone else. <laughs> Perhaps someone who's rather tall and multicolored. <laughs> That's enough jibber jabber nonsense. Now will you please go fetch my fan? I've lost my other one. Fine, but after I do, you're telling me the way out of this crazy rabbit hole. Ooh, this is so exciting. Why is his house big enough to fit a giant? Ooh, maybe it's so when he hops, he doesn't hit the ceiling. <laughs> I bet that's it. Pretty smart. Now, where's that fan? Ooh, I think I deserve a cookie for this. There's that fan. Wait a second. Last time I picked up the rabbit's fan, I changed size. But did I grow to be a gigantic giant? Or did I shrink down teensy weensy? I can't remember. Well, let's just take a chance. Here goes nothing. Hey, I'm not all rainbow colored now. <laughs> Score! But, whoa, whoa, wait, uh oh, I, I think I'm growing. Oh, I better crouch down so that I don't hit the ceiling. Oh no! Wow, this is so fun. Oh no, oh no, my house. You're wearing my house. What, this old thing? I'm calling the police. The police? But I'm already locked up. Well kids, this takes the cake. If I told my friends back home about this, they'd never believe me. <laughs> this is just like a fairy tale. Someone should write a story about me. We could call it Alice in the Rabbit Hole. Nah, that doesn't sound right. Hmm. It's the fuzz! All right, come out with your hands up. Oh no, I hope she's okay. I can't come out, but I can put my hands up. See? <gasps> and she stole my cookie. Dreadful girl. But I'm gonna need a backup here. We got a situation. I want to come out, I promise. I just can't. I didn't mean to do anything wrong. Look, I'm only a kid. Biggest kid I ever saw. Maybe it's from stealing so many cookies. Hey, I had permission to eat those other cookies. And this one, well, I'm gonna eat it now just because you're being so mean. So, to you, rabbit. Ooh. But we're gonna need to file a missing persons report. She disappeared. Let's go on another adventure. Come on. Chapter four, here we go. Wiggle, snap, story time. Well, there's the house and there's the rabbit and the policeman, but where's Alice? Over here. The cookie made me shrink and I escaped. Let's go. Hey, this looks like a great place to rest. What are you guys supposed to be? We are footmen. Footmen? <laughs> but you have fins. Shouldn't I call you fin men? <laughs> that was so funny. Footman is a fancy word for a servant. I work for the Duchess. And I work for the Queen. Well, I am very impressed. Nice to meet you both. I think I'd like to ask the Duchess if she can help me find my way home. Wait, you need me to open the door. I'm the footman. I can do it. Bless you. Bless you. Gesundheit. Bless you. Bless you. Bless you. Thank you. Who let you in? My footman? More like the fin man, <laughs> am I right? Need a tissue? Here, watch the baby. Wait a second, I'm bigger than that baby. Of course you are, why wouldn't you be? But out there, I was tiny. Look, I'm tiny. I'm big. Tiny. Big. Whoa, this place is crazy. I'm big. <laughs> That's enough, I'm going to play croquet. Take good care of the baby. Why is everyone giving me jobs to do? Good thing I like babies. Okay, baby, it's just you and me. And me. Ah! A giant cat! Maybe you're just small. I think I'm my usual size now, actually. It's hard to tell sometimes. Say, do you know how to babysit? 
There's a baby here. I only see you, me, and a pig wearing a diaper. Ah! Oh, the baby turned into a pig! Oh no, I'm the worst babysitter ever! And why are you grinning? This isn't funny. I'm a Cheshire cat. It's what I do. Well, stop it. It's not funny, and I don't know how to take care of a pig slash baby. Don't worry about it. Porky knows how to take care of himself. Let's watch TV and order a pizza. Usually I'd say yes to pizza, but you guys are making me a little nervous. I'm out of here. <laughs> hey, the, the, the room turned all topsy-turvy. Do you know the way out of here? Why don't you use the door, you bachi galoob? Let's go on another adventure. Come on. Chapter five, here we go. Wiggle, snap, story time. I'm still trying to find my way out of this rabbit hole. Oh, look, there's some nice looking fellows that should be able to help me. They're sleeping. Oh, I'm sorry. Hey, wait a second. You're just pretending. We were hoping you would leave us alone. Well, that's rude. Says the girl who interrupted our tea party. Your hair is too long. You should get a haircut. <laughs> that was hilarious. Why, you're rude too. Besides, I like my hair. And that rude little mouse is still pretending to be asleep, even though we've met before. I thought we were friends. Oh no, he really is asleep. Poor little guy's exhausted. Oh dear, now I am the rude one. No worries, have some tea. I guess he's a sleep talker. <laughs> the other two introduced themselves as the March Hare and the Mad Hatter. The March Hare was an odd creature indeed. He would butter a piece of toast and take one bite and say, yuck, too much butter, and then on to the next piece of toast. Same thing, over and over again. And the Mad Hatter, he was even odder. No, that's an utter. I said otter. Sorry. An otter? Where? Not that kind of otter. <laughs> Never mind. <laughs> Good. Otters are utterly annoying. Why do you keep dipping your watch into your tea? Well, it all goes back to the time I killed time. And then the Mad Hatter told me the most ridiculous story. He had to sing for the queen. He says he sang an old classic, Twinkle Twinkle. Twinkle, twinkle, little bat, how I wonder where you're at. I told him he had the words all wrong, but he insisted he was right, and I was ruining his story. On he went. Up above the world you fly, like a tea tray in the sky. Twinkle, twinkle. Anyway, you'll get the idea. Well, the queen jumped up and said he was killing the time, and then she yelled, Off with his head! The Mad Hatter managed to escape, head and all. Whew, that was a close one. But ever since, time has been paused, stopped, finished, el finito. Yes, my watch stopped at four o'clock, and we've just been here ever since. It's always tea time. I love tea time, but I do wish dinner time would come. At least you don't ever have bedtime. Bedtime is the worst. <laughs> oh, but I do love bedtime stories. <laughs> Those are so cool. I like stories about princesses and dragons and pirates. Oh, and stories about tigers and, and robots and, and romance. Oh, I love a romance. <laughs> and adventure and ninjas and oh, fairies and, and pixies. And oh, of course, a story about a handsome prince. Wow, that is so cool. Enough! We don't have time for you to list every kind of story ever told. Rude! Besides, I thought you had a lot of time. Weren't you listening? We have no time! That's very confusing. All I know is that you are a very rude bunny. And you are a very rude hatter, whatever that is. And you, Mr. Mouse, I thought you were supposed to be nice. I am, dear. Quite nice. Lovely to see you. Well, lovely to see you too. As for the rest of you, I'm going. Perfect. Goodbye. No, bad bye. It's the garden I've been looking for. Woohoo! What do you think is going to happen next? Let's go on another adventure. Come on. Chapter six. Here we go. Wiggle, snap, story time. 
Hi again. <laughs> I'm finally in the garden that I've been looking for. Awesome sauce. I should go to the Ferris wheel <gasps> and get cotton candy. <sighs> What's that noise? I better hide. Oh no, the Queen of Hearts. Watch out. Wow, the queen is actually a queen of hearts from a deck of playing cards. I wonder if she likes to play Go Fish. What's that? It smells like a rotten child. Hey, I'm not rotten. I'm really nice. Ask anybody, except the Mad Hatter <laughs> or the March Hare. They don't think I'm really nice. Or the White Rabbit. Don't ask him. He thinks I stole his cookie and ruined his house. <laughs> you did ruin my house. Off with her head! Uh-oh, she better watch out. No way! No, you're not offing with my head! I came here to do two things. Ride the Ferris wheel and eat cotton candy. So kindly, your highness, tell me where the Ferris wheel is. She is just a child, dear. Maybe you shouldn't off with her head. Oh, well, can you at least play croquet? I sure can! Oh boy, do I wish I hadn't said that. The Queen's croquet game was totally bananas. The card soldiers had to bend over backwards and frontwards to make the arches hit the ball through. Except the croquet balls were live hedgehogs and no one had any regular mallets. Instead, they used real live pink flamingos. It was the weirdest game ever. Uh-oh, this doesn't sound good but I was too scared not to play, or else she might say, off with Alice's head. Hmm, I'm really sorry, you guys. I promise to be very gentle. Thank you. No problem, Alice. Anyway, so I'm just standing over here, waiting for my turn, and guess who I see? Drew Pandas, Rapunzel, Rapunzel? Uh -uh. Crafty Carol, <laughs> no. Octavia, Keep guessing. Snow no. White, Cheshire Cat. That's right, the Cheshire Cat. Well, sort of, anyway. All I could see was his Cheshire Cat grin. Look, right over there. Hey, Cheshire Cat, is that really you? Yeah, how you doing? Not so great. I thought this garden was gonna be the best place ever, and it's not at all. The queen keeps yelling about offing people's heads, which personally, I don't find very gracious, and I don't like this mean old game of croquet. I don't think it's nice at all to the flamingos, or the hedgehogs, or even the card soldiers. By the way, why are you just a mouth right now? What happened to the rest of you? It's simple. The queen can't say off with my head if I don't have a head. Ooh, that makes sense. How about that? That better? Much better. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> Any idea how we can escape? What is that? Off with us! Off with us! Uh -uh! She couldn't figure out what to say, and she was getting pretty, 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 pretty angry. Quick, Cheshire Cat, how do we get out of here? Yo, Alice, eat this apple. Hey, watch it. Cool. Hey, Queen. Mm. What now? Now we're light enough to just float away. Huh? Whoa. from that mean old queen just in the nick of time. And hey, there's the Ferris wheel. <laughs> awesome. Now I just need to get the rest of me back so I can ride it. At least I have a mouth left to eat my cotton candy with. What do you think is gonna happen next? Let's go on another adventure. Come on. Chapter seven, here we go. Wiggle, snap, story time. I'm glad we got away from the queen, but what now? I'm just eyes and a mouth. Don't worry about it. All we gotta do is drink this potion. Wait a minute. Ah, oh, no, I left the potion in my pocket, which was on my pants, which have disappeared. Oh no, what if I'm only a mouth and eyes forever? I'll never get to learn ballet, or run a marathon, or swim with the dolphins. What about me over here? Those were my favorite pants. Whoa, Alice, is that you? Yeah, hi Drew. Wait, Drew, can you draw the rest of us? I think I can. How's that? Awesome, <laughs> thanks. Yay, I'm so happy. Okay, I don't know what you looked like before. Can you describe yourself? Oh sure, first let's see. 
I was tall, very tall, and strong with big muscles, a very cool mustache, and a suit made of pure gold. Oh, that's perfect. That is not what you looked like. Come on, why you gotta ruin all my fun? He's actually a purple stripy cat, super furry, with a yellow and orange necktie, <laughs> and a red hat with little flowers sticking out the top. Don't forget my orange cargo pants. Done. There's that potion. Told you I left it in my pocket. Never mind that now. Let's go play. <laughs> Woohoo! Alice, Drew, and the Cheshire Cat went over to the Ferris wheel. They were so excited. Three tickets for the Ferris wheel, please. <laughs> Sorry, kiddo. You must be this tall to ride. Well, that was weird. I'm sure I was taller before, or maybe the Ferris wheel was smaller. See, I keep eating these cookies and drinking these potions that make me grow and shrink, and I'm pretty sure the real me is tall enough to ride this ride. Sorry, kid. Move along. Ugh! Oh well, there were more rides, so the three went over to the merry-go-round. Three tickets for the merry-go-round, please. This is a kid's ride. You're way too tall. What? Now I'm too tall? Too tall. Hey, there's a roller coaster over there. Maybe you'll be just the right amount of tall for that one. Let's try it. It totally looked like a regular roller coaster, but when they got there, they saw that it was ginormous and that the you must be this tall to ride sign was towering over their heads. I thought this garden was going to be amazing and so much fun, but it's not. First, there was that awful game of flamingo hedgehog croquet. Then, the queen wanted to off with my head. And now, all these rides keep changing size. Or am I? I don't even know. And, and I haven't even had one single bite of cotton candy! Aw, cheer up, Alice. Yeah, I don't like it when you're sad. Hey, I have an idea. Here! Yes! My own jetpack! That is amazing! Oh, I always wanted one of these. Now we can fly up to the top of the Ferris wheel. You can see all the sights. Awesome. And we can go around and around in circles just like a merry-go-round. Oh, okay, I'm getting dizzy. And we can go up and down and all around just like a roller coaster. Ah, too fast. That was fun, Drew. Thanks. Yeah, tons of fun. Oh, I'm just glad it's over. No problem, guys. Suddenly, the gang heard a familiar voice. There they are, off with their heads. Oh no, it's the Queen of Hearts. Run! Better yet, let's jet. Alice Drew and the Cheshire Cat flew right over the Queen and her army. She did not like that at all. She would have totally offed their heads if she could have reached them. Kids, what do you think is gonna happen next? Let's go on another adventure, come on. Chapter eight, here we go. Wiggle, snap, story time. First, Drew and the Cheshire Cat zipped over the queen's head and into safer territory. Drew quickly sketched a door leading to another garden. He flew through, followed by the Cheshire Cat. But when Alice got to the door, she realized it was too tiny for her. Oh no, I've grown giant again. What's going on? You guys go on ahead. I must find out the cure to all this growing and shrinking. Alice began to walk through the garden looking for an apple or a cookie like the ones she'd eaten before. Oh, there's a plate of tarts. Perfect. These are the queen's tarts. Hands off, you dessert thief. Sorry, I didn't know. All rise. Today the honorable judge, the king of hearts, will hear the case of the missing tarts. But the tarts are right there. So who stole the tarts? No one, they're right there. It was the knave. The knave of hearts stole the tarts. No, he didn't. Then why did you say he did? I didn't. Don't you remember your poem, your honor? <laughs> the evidence. The queen of hearts, she made some tarts all on a summer's day. The knave of hearts, he stole those tarts and took them clean away. The king of hearts called for the tarts and beat the knave full sore. The knave of hearts brought back the tarts and vowed he'd steal no more. And so you see, this giant lady says the knave of hearts stole the tarts. Off with his head! No! Uh-oh, they better watch out. Please don't off with his head. It was just a made-up poem. Silence in the court. That means you, Alice. But quiet! 
or it's off with your head. Hmm, her head is much too large to off. Hey, that's not my fault. Maybe she stole the tarts. What? Me? I'm trying to defend you. She did steal my cookie. Oh dear, this was getting way out of control. Alice didn't steal any tarts. Well, she was going to, but she didn't actually do it. And she never met a knave of hearts before, but she was pretty sure he didn't steal any either. Besides, weren't the tarts right there and not missing at all? Your Honor, we can all see that the tarts are right here, as in not stolen. So why don't we all just forget about this whole thing and move on? <laughs> Who wants to play croquet? It's you! You're the girl from before! You were much smaller then. Exactly! It was she who stole the tarts. Your Honor, White Rabbit, Caterpillar, animals of the jury, you all have seen me before. You know that for whatever reason, I keep changing size. It's not from eating. Well, I did eat that one cookie, and then that other one. But those cookies were magical, or something. I don't know. Oh no, I hope she's okay. Will the Mad Hatter please take the stand? Oh great, this guy again. Kids, as you know, the Mad Hatter and Alice did not exactly get along. The Hatter bowed before the Queen and then began the silliest nonsense Alice had ever seen or heard. There was a girl who stole some tarts, and Alice was her name-o. A-L-I-C-E, 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 and Alice was her name-o. He's just making up this song, no fair. The real song is B-I-N-G-O And then she tried to blame the name Oh, Alice was her name Oh, A-L-I-C Enough! I don't like this song! Off with his head! <laughs> order! Order in the court! The animal jury will decide who is guilty Alice or the knave. The animals of the jury whispered, barked, meowed, squeaked, and riveted among themselves Finally, they had their decision we, the animals of the jury, think it was Alice who ate the tarts. What? No! That can't be! The knave of hearts is as skinny as a card. Nobody ate the tarts. They're right there! Wait, I'm confused. I thought they were stolen. They were stolen, but now they're here. And none are missing? Nope. Well, why are we arguing about this? I wonder why anyone does anything here in Wonderland. It's all so silly. Oh! What did she say about Wonderland? Oh, poo to you. You're nothing but a card. Why don't you go fish? Off with her head! The queen sent her entire pack of cards on the attack. They all came flying at Alice, as if someone had shuffled them and thrown them in the air, ninja style. What? Oh, I think I'm back at home. Is this real? Ouch! And I think I'm my right size. Oh, this is wonderful. <laughs> but how did I get back? Was it a dream? No, it couldn't be. But what if I want to go back to Wonderland sometime? It was scary and confusing sometimes, but also kind of fun. <laughs> oh well, time to eat. I'd love a cookie. Or maybe a tart. Shh. That was such a great ending. Thanks for coming to Storytime. See you next time. Bye. About a roast turkey. I'm just gonna add some potatoes and carrots and onions. Ew. Don't worry kids, only a little bit of onions. <laughs> Throw on some seasoning. Mmm, it smells so good. And into the oven it goes. And now, check out my whole story of Snow White. My real name is Margaret Katrine Simone Anna von Kluster Stadenstank. Yeah, so most people just called her Snow White, and pretty much everyone agreed that Snow White was the coolest girl around. She was funny, and then I said, that's not a yo-yo, it's a chicken. <laughs> <laughs> she was smart, A-N-I-S-M, and that's how you spell anti-disestablishmentarianism. And best of all, she was kind to every creature on Earth. She was even kind to her stepmother, Katrine Francesca Karina Amelia Anastasia von Kleschberg-Stadenstank. But you can call her the Evil Queen for short. As you might guess, the Evil Queen was not nice at all. It's like she only cares about herself. Yes, that was the problem. The Queen did not care for anyone other than herself. 
and she cared for herself way too much. She even traveled all the way to Grim Forest, where the witches live, just to buy a magic mirror that would tell her how great she was. This one is real nice. It'll tell you how wonderful you are. Error, error. Oh! Never mind, that one's no good. Okay, now this magic mirror is top of the line. You're gonna love it. Honestly, I'm getting some mean vibes from you. Ugh, next. Uh, okay, uh, this one. This is a great magic mirror. Go ahead, ask it. Excuse me, Mr. Mirror. No, 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 no. You gotta say mirror, mirror on the wall. It likes that. All right. Mirror, mirror on the wall. Who is the most amazing person of all? You are my queen. You are the most amazing person of all. You're the best. Aha, I'll take it. Oh man, Snow White's stepmother loved that mirror. She would ask it like a dozen times a day if she was still the most amazing person in all the land. Will you pass the gravy, please? Hold on, hold on. Mirror, mirror on the wall. It's your turn. Yes, yes, one moment. Mirror, mirror on the wall. This again. Mirror, mirror on the wall. Who I'm is trying the to sleep. Of all? So yeah, the mirror was pretty annoying. The queen loved giving Snow White chores, as evil queens tend to do. So one day she was cleaning the evil queen's bedroom. She was just about finished when she noticed some schmutz on the magic mirror. I'm definitely not allowed to touch the mirror, but she did say the room had better be spotless. I'd hate to make her mad. Snow White reached out to dust the mirror and... <gasps> it's you! What? You are the most amazing person in the land! Why, thank you, but don't say that. The queen will get, like, really mad. Ugh, she is so mean. But I can see that you have a good heart. <laughs> Are you actually just an x-ray machine? <laughs> no, I mean you have a good soul. The queen has a rotten soul, by the way. Well, thanks for the compliment, but you really must keep telling her that she's the best. It's dangerous to make her mad. Promise? Okay. Long story short, the mirror did not keep his promise for long. Mirror, mirror on the wall, who is the most amazing person of all? You, my lady, are an amazing person. Of all? Yeah, sure. Of all. Say it then. Say the whole thing. Uh, I meant to say that you, my queen, are the most amazing person of all? Good, just checking. Uh... What was that? Nothing, nothing, nothing. It sounded like something. It's... Just that Snow White may be more amazing. But the queen didn't scream or break things, and she didn't cry. She was just very quiet. That's not good, kids. When the evil queen gets quiet, it means she's really, 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 really mad. And like Snow White said, that can be very dangerous. <coughs> yep, she looks pretty mad. I will get rid of Snow White. That sounds bad. Poor Snow White, she didn't do anything. Yeah, I was just minding my own business. The evil queen tried all kinds of different ways to get rid of the princess. She locked me out. Ugh, she tried to mail me to Alaska. She even tried to send me away in a hot air balloon. You might be wondering why my dad didn't step in and do anything. Well, he was away on King Business at the semi-annual Royal Symposium. That's where natural-born kings and queens go to learn royal stuff, like how to balance giant crowns on their heads and how to wave at a parade. So I was on my own. The queen was getting frustrated. She couldn't get rid of Snow White. She finally decided to go back to the witches of the Grim Forest. Surely they could get the job done. Oh, it's you again. Welcome back. I need a curse to get rid of a princess. Oh, goody. I just love those curses. What do you need? A hundred years sleep? Make her lose her singing voice? Ooh, maybe we turn her into a frog. I just want her to go away forever. Ooh, I see. A one-way ticket. Exactly. Well, my sister is a travel agent. We can send her to China. I was thinking something a little more permanent. Okay, okay. Well, how about a classic de-atomizer? What is that? I don't know, but it sounds cool, right? Can't you just do something, I don't know, witchy? Oh, sure. That's easy. Here's what you need. 
a bubbling cauldron, a rose, Ow! watch out for the thorns, the tooth of the shark, eee! a rotten egg, gross, a picture of Santa Claus, um, random, and a lock of snow white hair. And check. Mix it all together and say these words. Mecca like a ding dong, cherry chicken ping pong, snow white, why don't you just disappear already? Mecca like a ding dong, cherry chicken ping pong, snow white, why don't you just disappear already? And just like that, Snow White disappeared. Didn't think it would work, did you? Yeah, neither did I. But here's the thing, boys and girls. People don't really disappear. They just appear somewhere else. And that's what happened to Snow White. She appeared in another fairy tale. Whoa, where am I? This isn't our kingdom. Hey, I think that's Cinderella. How'd I get into her storyline? Oh, maybe her fairy godmother can help me get home. Did somebody say fairy godmother? I did. Do you want to go to the ball too? I can let you go. But you can't win the heart of the prince. I already promised that to my goddaughter, Cinderella. That's okay, I don't need a prince. I just want to go home. Oh, gotcha. And with a wave of her wand, Cinderella's fairy godmother sends Snow White back home. Whoa. And at the very same moment, the evil queen was asking the magic mirror if she was the most amazing person in all the land. Uh, no, it's still Snow White. What? I got rid of her. It should be me. This is awkward. Oh, I'll get her. And this time, I'll make sure she never comes back. I've got a wicked good plan. <laughs> I think you have something in your teeth. Oh, be quiet. The evil queen had just discovered that Snow White was back, and she was not happy. For revenge, she gave Snow White an endless list of chores to do. I had to clip her toenails. Ugh. I had to brush her cat's teeth. And as always, I had to clean her room, which she had left super messy on purpose. I mean, really, who leaves a half a meatloaf under the bed? Gross. Hey there, how's it going? <sighs> you scared me. <laughs> Sorry, I hope the queen's not being too mean. She's a real piece of work. Yeah, you think deep down maybe she's actually nice? Uh, I don't think so. She's pretty bad. I bet she was a really nice kid. And then something terrible happened, like a wizard cast a spell on her that made her bad. Not exactly. Or maybe she was attacked by a two-headed fire-breathing dragon and she just hasn't been the same since. Or, or, or maybe she was tricked by a boy who said he was a charming prince but then he turned out to be a scaly lizard. And ever since then, she's just too sad to be nice. Um, nope, I don't think so. Surely she hasn't always been evil. I'm an all-knowing mirror. Trust me, she's been bad since day one. She drew angry frowny faces on all her sister's dolls. She cut her brother's hair, and not in a good way. She scribbled all over her family photos. She even put mustard in her mom's shampoo bottle. Yes, indeed. She is one bad apple. Well, if she's always been bad, then how come my dad wanted to marry her? She tricked him. Before your soon-to-be stepmother moved to town, she paid a little visit to the witches in the Grim Forest. Welcome to ye old witchcraft and novelty shop. What can I do for ya? I want to be queen. Hmm, I don't have any crowns, but I could sell you this t-shirt that says, I'm the queen, gotta love me. <gasps> That's it! I need to make the king fall in love with me. I need a potion, a love potion. Ooh, good idea. The witch sold her a magic love potion that would make a guy fall totally head over heels in love with her. Whoa, I'm totally head over heels in love with you. Will you marry me? Unfortunately, that was my dad. And that's how she became the queen, and worst of all, my stepmother. Even back then, she didn't like me. Ugh! Seriously, who doesn't like babies? Hey, do you think the spell could be broken? That would take some very serious magic. Even the witches of the Grim Forest have trouble reversing spells. Wait! She's coming! How do you know? How many times do I have to tell you? I'm an all-knowing mirror. I know everything. Did I hear you talking to someone? Yeah, um, I, 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 I talk to myself when I'm cleaning. <laughs> really? What about? Well, 
I was just talking to myself about the weather. Yeah, <laughs> beautiful day, isn't it? Oh, I, I guess so. Now get back to work. That was close. Yeah, if she catches me talking to you, she'll lose it. <gasps> Uh-oh. What? Uh-oh is right, kids. The evil queen was listening at the door. Total fake out. Oh, I forgot to tell you. Tomorrow I'm sending you to the Grim Forest to return this defective mirror. I'm sure you'll both have a lovely time. Wake up! What time is it? It's time to go to the Grim Forest. <laughs> Here's the mirror. What happened to it? It's all smashed. See? I told you it was defective. See ya! She'll find her way into the forest, but she'll never find her way out. <laughs> okay, this is only extremely very scary. No big deal. I wish the queen hadn't busted the mirror. He would be good company about now. Ugh, and these directions. Walk backwards down the dragon's path? Make a left at the gargoyles. A backwards left or a frontwards left? It's that way. Thanks. Then turn around three times at the Troll's Bridge. <gasps> hey there, my sweet. I'm not your sweet, you troll. Sorry, I don't get out much. Then hop on one foot. Why? Hop on one foot past the Wicked War's warehouse. <laughs> and so the Wishes Shop should be? Yoo-hoo, right here. You looking for me? Yeah. How'd you know? Oh, just witch's intuition. That means I'm a really good guesser. Come inside. So, my stepmom wants to return this mirror. Oh, this mirror is very smart. Top of the line. Or at least it was. Yeah, I think the queen had a temper tantrum. <laughs> I remember her. Ugh, she's a doozy. Tell me about it. <laughs> This mirror was perfect for her. He knows when to tell a little white lie. Oh, like telling her she's the most amazing in the land? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that was a fib if I ever heard one. Hey, think we could just fix the mirror? I was starting to like him, and I have a feeling I'm going to need his all-knowing powers. <laughs> all-knowing is good. We'll just put a new face on him, new frame, and boom! Looks brand new. Awesome! Need anything else? Snake tooth? Lucky pigtail? Lotto tickets? Actually, can you reverse a love spell? No way, I don't mess with love spells anymore. Legal reasons. Snow White said goodbye to the witch and began her journey out of the Grim Forest. Why, hello there. Hi. <laughs> Maybe the Grim Forest isn't so bad. Okay, so to get back, I just have to reverse the directions. <laughs> Hey, where's the Wicked Wart's warehouse? Or the Troll Bridge? It's getting dark, and I'm lost. Wait, I know. The Mirror will know how to get out. Um, hello, Mr. Mirror? Where's the on switch? Snow White tried everything she could think of to get the Mirror to work. She tried voice command. Mirror, activate. She tried shaking it. She tried smacking it. Finally, she tried yelling at no one in particular. Why? Um, excuse me, ma'am. Ah! Sorry, didn't mean to frighten you. Are you okay? I'm lost, and it's dark, and this mirror is supposed to know everything, and it won't turn on. And I'm hungry, and I'm scared, and... Who are you? I'm the professor. You must be smart. Do you know the way out of this forest? I need to get back to my kingdom. Yep. Follow me. Okay. The professor led Snow White out of the Grim Forest, past the Wicked Ward's warehouse, the Troll Bridge, the Gargoyles, the Dragon's Path, all the way to where Snow White had began. Thank you so much, Professor. <laughs> You're welcome. I hope to see you again one day. I don't know if I'll be going back into the Grim Forest anytime soon, but <laughs> if I do, I'll look for you. They said their goodbyes, and Snow White went inside the palace to give her stepmother the mirror. You're back? I mean, um, you're, you're back. How lovely. 
and I brought you a new mirror. <laughs> I don't know how to turn it on though. It needs batteries, duh. Wow. <laughs> well, good night. Mirror, mirror on the wall. Who is the most amazing person of all? You better say me. It's you, my queen. Hmm, you sound the same as my old mirror, the one I destroyed. All magic mirrors have this voice now. It's factory issue. Don't worry, my queen. That old mirror is history. Did you just wink? Uh, no, just something in my eye. The queen was not happy with Snow White's return. Hi, I'm Snow White, and I'm so cool. Blech. It's time to get rid of her once and for all. Uh-oh. What did you say? I said uh-oh because, um, I haven't told you how awesome you look today, have I? Silly me. You look good, girlfriend. Oh, thank you. There you go, Mr. Squirrel. Keep the cast on for six weeks. And don't get it wet. <laughs> He's totally going to get it wet. Hey there, Snow White. Let's pause for a second. That was Shep Huntsman. A lot of people just called him the Huntsman because he was actually the official hunter for the king. Okay, let's continue with the story. Hi, Shep. <laughs> How's it going? <laughs> oh, you know, just hanging out. Cool. <laughs> Sorry, let's pause again. Snow White had a little bit of a crush on the Huntsman. What? He's really nice, and he taught me all kinds of wilderness survival skills. He taught me how to call a turkey. Hello, can I please speak to Mr. Turkey? No, like this. <laughs> and how to make s'mores. Are they done yet? Are they done yet? Are they done yet? He even taught me what to do if I encountered an angry fire-breathing dragon. <gasps> Who's a good boy? Who's a good boy? It's you, it's you all. Oh. Anyway, what I mean is he's just cool, <laughs> whatever. So, how's it going? Oh, wait, I already asked you that, didn't I? Yoo-hoo, Huntsman boy, I need to speak to you. Okay, your highness, be right there. No, now! I mean, please. <laughs> you better go, she's been super testy lately. Okay, see you later. See ya. <laughs> Huntsman boy, I need you to do a job for me. Sure, your highness. I need you to take Snow White out. On a date? A date? With her? Ugh, you have no taste. No, I need you to take Snow White deep into the forest and sell her to the wizard. I don't get it. There's nothing to get. You take her into the woods, you sell her to the weird wizard who will turn her into a frog or something, and then you bring me the money. Why do you want the wizard to turn her into a frog? I don't care if it's a frog or a rock or a bobblehead toy. I just want her gone. I don't think I can do this. It's not nice. Ugh. If you don't do it, I will. And trust me, that's much worse for pretty little Snow White. Why? She's so sweet. That's exactly why. Now run along. You have work to do. This is bad. I mean, you look rad. The huntsman was very upset. He went down to sit by the koi pond. That's where he liked to do his serious thinking. I really like Snow White. I couldn't do anything to hurt her. What am I supposed to do? Meanwhile, Snow White went upstairs to do her chores and talk to her friend, the mirror. Hey, how are ya? The queen is making the huntsman take you out. On a date? No, out in the forest where he's gonna sell you to the wizard. The wizard? He turns people into frogs. Wait, Chef Huntsman would never do that to me. The queen said if he doesn't, she'll do worse. I think you should run away from the kingdom. This is my home. I'm the princess. It's not safe for you here. You'll find happiness in the forest. Trust me. Snow White knew the mirror wouldn't lie to her, so she went to her room to pack all her prized possessions. Why won't you fit? <sighs> <sighs> You're probably better off here anyway, Teddy. I'll miss you. And I'll miss you too, Lamb. <laughs> and I'll miss you, dollhouse with a real elevator and a tiny ice cream machine. <gasps> and you, my beautiful dresses. <sighs> I'm going to miss being a princess, but I will be brave. And I will go out into the forest and I will survive. One day, I will return. Not as a princess, but as a queen. Snap, girl. That was fierce. 
And so Snow White set off to find the Huntsmen and begin their journey. She was ready for her new adventure. Snow White and the Huntsmen set off for their journey into the Grim Forest. It was a little awkward for a few reasons. One, she totally knew he was supposed to sell her to the wizard. Two, he didn't know that she knew that he was supposed to sell her to the wizard, and he was nervous. And three, they were always a little awkward around each other anyway, because that's just how it is sometimes, when you kind of like somebody and you hope they like you back. So, uh, the sky is blue. Uh, uh I mean, a uh, nice day, right? Yeah. <laughs> Perfect day for a stroll. Yeah, just a nice stroll through a spooky forest. Look, I know the queen told you to get rid of me. You do? I won't sell you to the wizard, I promise. Psh, like I was gonna let you. What are we gonna do? I packed some basic survival items. Jerky, trail mix, water, jelly beans, first aid kit, oh, and I packed a teeny tiny teddy bear. <laughs> I couldn't get the big one to fit in my bag. I can't just leave you out here. I'll be okay. You taught me all kinds of survival skills. Why don't I stay here with you? Are you nuts? If you stay, then the queen will come looking for both of us. Yeah, that would be bad. I'll be all right. The queen's magic mirror told me so. Come visit me sometime? Of course. Here, take my camping toolkit. It's got all kinds of handy stuff, even fingernail clippers. Oh yeah, I guess there's no place for a Manny Petty out here. Whatever, <laughs> I'll be fine. I better go. Don't want to make the queen mad. See ya, Snow White. See ya, Shep Huntsman. And that's how Snow White began her first day as a non-princess, stranded in the woods with a small teddy bear and a pair of fingernail clippers. Well, I better start setting up camp. As Snow White began to work on her new dwelling, the Huntsman practiced his spiel for the queen. It had to be perfect. Why, yes, your highness. I definitely sold Snow White to the wizard. He said he'd turn her into a frog in no time. Yes, ma'am. I sold her for, oh no. If I sold the princess, then I should have money. I don't have any money. The huntsman checked his pockets for loose change. Nope. He looked in his sock. Nada. He checked his fanny pack where he kept important things like his Phillips head screwdriver and chewing gum. Zip, zilch, zero. Wait, I know, to the koi pond. That's where I toss in my coins and make wishes. I wish I could get a puppy. I wish I could fly. I wish I could grow a mustache. I wish I had a hundred wishes. There must be like a million dollars in there by now. Hey, I never did get that puppy or that mustache. That's it. I'm taking my wishes back. Meanwhile, in Grim Forest, Snow White had just finished setting up her new, um, apartment? Perfect. It's shabby chic. <laughs> oh man. Okay, third time's a charm. Excuse me, Snow White? Professor, boy am I glad to see you. What are you doing here? I live here now. <laughs> We're neighbors. Great, there goes the neighborhood. Who's your friend? That's Sassy McSassy Pants. That's your name? I love it. <laughs> My real name is Sasper. It's short for exasperation. No, it isn't. Snow White, you can't live out here like this. Oh, sure I can. I'm not a princess anymore. I'm just a regular girl. Regular girls don't live under a pile of sticks in Grim Forest. Come on, you're moving in with us. No. Hush, Sasper. Oh, I shouldn't intrude. No, she shouldn't. Nonsense. Let's go. Snow White grabbed her bag and followed the professor and Sasper to their little cottage in the woods. She was so excited. I've never had roommates before. <laughs> this is going to be so much fun. Back at the kingdom, the huntsman had just gathered enough coins and was off to see the queen. Your majesty? Why are you all wet? Uh, it's raining. Uh, in the woods. It was raining in the woods. Anyway, here's your money. You sold Snow White to the wizard? Yup. He said he was definitely going to turn her into a frog. A frog? Are you sure? Yes, ma'am. You'll never see Snow White again. Well, you might see her as a frog, but it would be hard to tell it's her. Unless maybe she's wearing little yellow frog pants or something. How cute! Now please leave. Okay, your highness. See you later. Now, Muir, tell me, who is the most awesome and wonderful and dazzling person in all the land? Why, it's you, my queen. Obviously. Who else would it be? Snow White? Please, give me a break. As if. Psst. Okay, that's enough. Don't overdo it. That night, everyone went to bed feeling pretty happy. 
The huntsman was glad he didn't have to sell Snow White to the bad wizard. The queen felt confident that she was the best thing since sliced bread. And Snow White was excited to start this new chapter in her life with her new cool roommates. I'm gonna need a bigger bed. Good morning. Good morning! How long have you guys been there? Not long! You drool when you sleep. We're just so excited! We've never had a princess for a roommate, or any roommate at all, except for all of us, of course, and we used to have a dog. Does that count? I think so. Do you want breakfast? Snacky made pancakes! They're shaped like animals! They're the best! You're so perky for so early in the morning. <laughs> What's your name? Kitty! Cute! You fell asleep as soon as you walked in the door yesterday. They didn't get a chance to introduce themselves. I was pooped. <laughs> Leaving your kingdom and roughing it in the woods is exhausting. <laughs> okay, let's do names. Of course I know you, Professor. <laughs> and now you know me and Sassy. I'm Snacky. He's the one who makes the pancakes. I'm the one who makes everything around here. Any favorite foods? Yes. I like corn on the cob, and white cheddar cheese puffs, and snow cones, and club sandwiches. Oh, hold the mayo, though. <laughs> Got it. I'm sloppy. I see. <laughs> I'm clumsy. That's just my nickname, though. I'm actually quite graceful. Whoa, 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 whoa. Oh, I'm OK. Is that everyone? Don't forget me. I'm Tony. Hi. <laughs> well, I'm pleased to meet all of you. <laughs> So, what do you guys do for fun around here? We work. What? Work's no fun. Unless you get to work at an amusement park. <laughs> That's probably fun. We work in the mines. Oh, diamond mines? No, salt. Oh, and you have fun doing that? Sure, everything's fun when you're with your best pals. What do you do for fun? I dance and sing and go to parties and play with all my animal friends and read and get in snowball fights and fly kites and ride bikes and, well, yeah, just to name a few. <laughs> but I'll totally go to work in the mines with you guys. I'm no freeloader. You're much too big to go into the mines. Well, I'll work here then. I can clean. I used to clean my stepmother's room all the time. We're not very messy. <laughs> Right. I'm also pretty good at sewing. <gasps> I can make you guys matching outfits. That no would be thanks. amazing. Well, then let me at least make some new curtains. There's a lot of bad feng shui around here. Finally, it was settled that Snow White would spruce up the cottage in exchange for free room and board. She did other little things too, like cut their hair and make a new chef's hat for Snacky. Oh, and she changed all the light bulbs, which was a huge help. Snow White kept so busy that she didn't even have time to miss home. Actually, speaking of home, the evil queen was having a ball without Snow White around. She brought the mirror with her everywhere and showed everyone how it would say that she was the most awesome person in all the land. Ask the mirror if you're the most awesome person. Okay, okay, I'll ask. Mirror, mirror, in my hand, who's the most awesome person in the land? Is it this guy? No. Is it her? It's you, queen. You are so awesome. Pretty rude, though, if you ask me. Hear that? I'm the most awesome person in the land. Three cheers for me. Oh, yay. Let's have a party in my honor. And I'll save my first dance for you, Mr. Huntsman. I, uh, actually can't. I'm busy. Busy? Too busy to attend a party of the queen? What are you doing that's so important? I, uh, have to wash my hair. Yeah, that's it. Okay, bye. The queen knew he was telling her a lie, but she didn't know why. She watched the huntsman from her window as he walked out of the palace and straight toward... Grim Forest? Suspicious. I'll have to follow him and find out what he's up to. Dun, dun, dun! What was that? Nothing. The queen followed the huntsman into the woods. Who's there? What was that? Is someone there? Finally, they stopped. Hey there. Snow White! The queen watched as Snow White and the huntsman talked and laughed. 
That rotten huntsman was supposed to get rid of her! He was supposed to take her to the wicked wizard and have her turned into a frog! How hard is that? Well, thanks for stopping by. Sure thing. Need anything special for next time? Yes, Snacky asked if you could bring him some marshmallows and graham crackers. We're gonna make s'mores. Awesome, will do. Bye, Snow White. Bye, Chef. And please be careful. If the queen finds out, she'll be very angry and we're done for. Yes, that would be bad, wouldn't it, princess? The queen rushed over to the witch's shop and barged right in. Hey, ever hear a knocking? This is an emergency! I need something! Something evil! Yeah, all right. The next day, Snow White had just finished her chores when a little old woman popped out of nowhere and said, you my lady! I'm but a poor peddler woman selling shoes door to door! Shoes? Oh, I don't have much money. They're on sale! They're so pretty and just your size! You deserve a treat! Well, I guess I could just take a look. Try them on! These are beautiful! I don't think I can afford them. No, they're free! <laughs> free? Why? Snow White started to go after the old woman to insist on paying her, only to realize... I'm stuck! What? No! No! I'm turning to stone! Why? Help! 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 Oh no! Snow White had become a statue from head to toe! She didn't even know what you and I know! That the old woman had really been... The Evil Queen! Goodbye forever, Snow White! <laughs> the Queen went back to her kingdom, happy to be rid of Snow White. She marched straight towards the magic mirror. Question, why did you say I was the most awesome person in all the land when we both know you favor Snow White? But Snow White is gone, my queen. She is now. But since you're such a wise, all-knowing mirror, you must have known she's been in the grim forest all this time. Oh, see, when you said in all the land, I thought you meant around here, like in this kingdom. I didn't know you were counting grim forest. My bad. Well, it doesn't matter. She's gone forever this time, and you better watch your back. Ooh. The evil queen was also quite angry with the huntsman. She put him in jail and threw away the key. Wait, I didn't have dinner yet. Oh man. Meanwhile, back at Grim Forest, the dwarves were just coming back from work. What's that? Looks like a statue. It looks like Snow White. Cool. I want a statue that looks like me. Snow White, Snow White, come out here. There's a Wait, I think this is Snow White. It must be an evil curse from that evil queen. She's so evil. Oh, no. The dwarves were so upset. They didn't know how to reverse a curse, and they didn't know whether Snow White could think or feel in there, or if she truly was made of stone. What if she's scared? What if she gets cold? We have to move her inside. The dwarves tried with all their might, but they couldn't move Snow White. Professor, do you know any ways to reverse a spell? Well, let's see. Maybe she could kiss a frog. Here! <laughs> Why do you have a frog in your pocket? Why not? It's cute! Okay, let's reverse this spell. Maybe say some magic words! Alakazam! Abracadabra! Kalamazoo! Bless you! It's no use! We don't know magic! We could go to a witch. But the witches live in the scary part of the forest! We'll just have to be brave. Yes! We have to save our friend! The professor and Giddy set off to find a witch to reverse the spell, while the rest of the gang stood watch to guard and protect Snow White. Ah! Shoo! Go away! What if we can't reverse the spell and Snow White is a statue forever? Don't worry, Tiny. We'll have a happy ending. I just know it! Professor and Giddy were on their way to find a way to save their friend Snow White, bravely trekking through the grim forest. Ah! 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 Okay, well, at least they were trying to be brave. But hey, at least they were willing to face their fears and help a friend, right? The two finally found what they were looking for. Ye old magic shop! Hello! Hi! Ding, 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 ding! Ah! Uh, I mean, hello! I'm Giddy! Good for you! And I'm the professor! We need to reverse an evil spell! What kind of spell? Our friend was turned to stone! That worked? Wow! 
Uh, alright, I mean, uh, let's see what I have in the antidote department. That means stuff that undoes bad stuff. But you're a professor, so you probably already knew that. Yes, I did. I didn't! I love learning new words! Ah, here we are. Now we just toss it in the cauldron... and... While Giddy, Professor, and the Witch mixed up the antidote, or stuff that undoes bad stuff, the evil queen was back at her castle, thinking, which is never a good thing. Snow White's turned to stone, but why don't I feel any better? I should be glowing, relaxed, happy. Mirror, do I look happy to you? Uh, you look, yeah. Look at that smile. No, this is no good. How do I know some dingbat isn't going to stumble along and reverse the spell? I'm sure it's fine. Nope, I'm going back to take the statue. The evil queen strikes again. Wake up, guys. It's time to save Snow White. We have the antsy goat. That means stuff that undoes bad stuff. Right, Professor? Something like that, but yes. Guys, we can reverse the spell. Wait, where's Snow White? Snow White! Snow White, where are you? Guys, she's a statue. She can't answer you. Oh, right. Statues can't talk. I got it. Snow White, blink twice if you can hear us. Gee, great plan. Well, if you had been guarding her, she wouldn't be lost. Me? I wasn't the only one. What about you? Oh, pretty please stop fighting. I don't like it. Giddy's right. We have to work together. It's no use. She's either been stolen. Statue net! Or maybe she came back to life and she left. No, she wouldn't just leave like that. I bet the evil queen took her. Of course. Well, we have to go find her. I love it! Okay, team name. How about the seven cool dudes? Blech. I'll consider that a yes. It was official. The seven cool dudes were on their way to save Snow White. Well, there's the castle. Now what? We storm the gates and find Snow White. Wait, there's Snow White now. I have the witch's antidote. We'll just go up and turn her back to her old self. Hey, Professor, over here. Hey, it's the Huntsman. Why are you in jail? The Queen locked me up for trying to help Snow White. I don't know what you're planning to do, but be careful. Uh-oh, we came to help Snow White. Huh? I thought Snow White was with you guys. She's here? Um... Oh, that's just a statue. The Queen put it there to torment me. Actually, we think that's the real Snow White. No! We're not sure, but we think so. But we have a potion from a witch that could change your back. Well, what are you standing here talking to me for? Go save Snow White. But the huntsman said that just a wee bit too loudly, and yep, you guessed it. Suddenly, there was the evil queen standing right between the dwarves and Snow White. Save Snow White? Never! We will save her! Aw, oh, you seem so upset. How sad would you be if I smashed that statue into a thousand pieces? No! no! Watch me! Okay, guys, it's time to fight back. But I'm a leopard, not a fighter. Today, we're all fighters. Now let's get that evil queen. The dwarves grabbed the queen's legs and stopped her in her tracks. Get off me! Get off! Not until Snow White lives and you're gone forever! The queen tried to move forward, but it was no use. But then she spotted the witch's spell-reversing potion in the professor's hand. Give me that! No way! Got it! <laughs> now get off me! Then the professor had an idea. You want us to let go of you? Yes! Let go! Okay! Let go, guys! <laughs> All right. But she has the spell-reversing antidote! But luck would have it that the evil queen dropped the antidote and it fell right smack dab on Snow White's head! <laughs> What's everybody crying about? And why are all these pigeons on me? Shoot, birds, shoot! Snow White, you're alive! Of course I'm alive, why wouldn't I be? But wait, why am I back at the castle? And Shep, why are you in jail? The evil queen put me here! No, where is she? Over there! Owie! I'm confused. 
It's a long story. I'll tell it. I love long stories. I'm all ears, but first we got to do two things. Let's bust Shep out of jail and put that bad apple in his place. Yeah! No! Sorry, majority rules. Evil queen rules. <laughs> that rhymed! Yay! Once the evil queen was locked away in jail, Shep, the dwarves, and Snow White all kicked back and relaxed, happy as could be. Wait, no, there was one thing missing. Snow White, my darling daughter. Dad! That's right. Remember back in chapter two when I told you that Snow White's dad was away at the semi-annual royal symposium? You know, the place where kings and queens go to learn royal stuff. Well, he was back. Dad, I missed you. Where's the queen? Long story. Oh, yippee! Let me tell it. I love long stories. Now, how's that for a happy ending? <laughs> wow, I'm so, 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 so glad the evil queen can do no more mischief, aren't you? Um, excuse me. Um, pardon me. Uh, coming through. Um, can I speak to your manager? That would be me. What are you doing? I'm drawing my memoir. Here's me as a baby making daisy chains in the garden. Here's me as a teenager listening to rock music. And here is me as a young man fighting a jabberwock. Oh, I've heard of that one. Good. Usually nobody's heard of it. I've heard of it. So that makes two people who know of my adventures now, you and nobody. What? Hi kids, I'm Miss Booksy and this is Storytime. Today we're reading Alice Through the Looking Glass. Chapter one, here we go. Wiggle, snap, story time. Parlor was where I studied books and poems and maps. And it's where I would play chess with my two best pals, Kitty and Snowball. Yeah. Alice had just called Checkmate. That means I'm about to win, Kitty. I'm very sorry, but you just aren't playing very well. Have you been practicing? Well. Really? <laughs> Every night you practice? I don't believe you. <laughs> and Snowball, you aren't even paying attention. Yeah. Oh, sure, just play with your yarn. <laughs> oh, so cute. <sighs> Why are you so naughty? I ought to toss you through the looking glass. Meow. Yeah. What's a looking glass? It's a mirror, silly cat. <laughs> Alice showed her kittens the giant mirror. See, there's another world in there. I think everything is backwards over there, but nobody really knows for sure. No one has ever even gone through. Snowball bopped her ball of yarn and it went rolling through the looking glass. Snowball, go get it. Meow. You kittens are so adorable, but not very good at tricks. <laughs> I guess I'll just have to go get it myself. Oh, cool! I'm here! <laughs> Look! Snowball! Kitty! I'm through the looking glass! I guess they can't hear me. I suppose I never did hear anything from the other side before. Now where's that yarn? <laughs> it's funny. I would have expected it to look the same over here. But it doesn't. Wow, this is so fun! Hey! <laughs> it's summer here! On the other side, it was winter. <gasps> There's a chessboard, just like mine. I don't are know the pieces where moving? Where's my kitten? Oh, kitty, where are you? They're talking. Look, the red queen piece is yelling at the white king. <gasps> You've lost my kitten, you rat. I did no such thing. Oh, she has a kitten too. It must be the tiniest kitten. I should help. Oh, oh! giant, put, put us, us down. down hurt you. I want to help you find your kitten. But Alice didn't realize that because she was so big, her voice sounded quite scary to the little king and queen. What they heard was, I won't hurt you. Oh, that makes sense. Let go of us. Oh, okay. Ah! Jeez, I was only trying to help. They didn't even say thank you. Then Alice saw a great big book. What's this? Yabba da 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 da. Huh? Oh, it's backwards. <laughs> because everything looks backwards in mirrors, I'll just hold it up to the looking glass and then I'll be able to read it. Jabberwocky? What's that? 
Beware the Jabberwock, my son. The jaws that bite, the claws that catch. Beware the Jubjub bird and the frimmiest bandersnatch. I wonder what a Jubjub bird looks like. <laughs> and what the heck is a bandersnatch? He took his vorpal sword in hand. Long time the maxim foe he sought. So rested he by the tum-tum tree. I bet a tum-tum tree has all kinds of yummy things inside <laughs> and growls when it's hungry. Ooh, this is so exciting. The Jabberwock with eyes of flame came whiffling through the Tolji wood and burbled as he came. One, two, one, two, and through and through the vorpal blade went snicker-snack. Mmm, snicker-snack. <laughs> and hast thou slain the Jabberwock? Come to my arms, my beamish boy. Oh, frab just day, kalu kalay. He chortled in his joy. Oh, frab just day? Who says that? <laughs> Um, I think that was a very good poem, <laughs> but I'm not sure I understood it. But I am positive I would not like to meet any Jabberwockies. <laughs> Actually, I should definitely, probably go back to my side of the looking glass. No Jabberwockies there. But then again, maybe I should explore a little? It does look like a really nice day outside. Alice started for the stairs and then realized she wasn't walking, but floating down them. Whoa! <laughs> She floated down the stairs and to the door. Okay, this definitely never happened on the other side of the looking glass. Ooh, interesting. Let's read another story, come on. Chapter two, here we go. Wiggle, snap, story time. Hey, this is kind of like Wonderland. <laughs> I just floated like a feather into this lovely, but giant flower garden. <laughs> and things that don't usually talk and walk are talking and walking. <laughs> I better not eat any weird cookies or follow any rabbits. Or pick any flowers. What? I said do not pick the flowers. Are you really a flower? <laughs> yes, I am. And I prefer not to be picked. Oh, of course. I would never. <laughs> May I ask, how did you learn to talk? How did you learn to talk? I suppose my parents taught me. <laughs> I don't really remember. I was just a baby. <laughs> Can all flowers talk? Yeah, but we usually wait until spoken to. <gasps> That's so magical. What kind of flower are you? I'm not a flower. <laughs> Your petals are so strange. This is my hair. <laughs> and look, she has two stems. How odd. Alice didn't like being made fun of, so she changed the subject. Do any other plants talk? The tree says bow wow. That's why its branches are called boughs. Oh, you didn't know that? Stop teasing our guest. They know I can't reach them. If I could, I would bop them and pull their petals. Allow me. <laughs> if you don't be quiet, I'll pick you. Ah! Ah! Alice tried to change the subject again to something nicer than daisy pulling. How is it you can all talk so well? I've been in many gardens before, but none of the flowers could talk. Put your hands down and feel the ground. Then you'll know why. Okay. It's very hard, but I don't see what that has to do with anything. In most gardens, they make the flower beds too soft, so the flowers all fall asleep. Oh, I would have never thought of that. <laughs> well, you don't look very smart. I never saw a flower that looked sillier. Oh, that's so not cool. Enough! I'm sorry, they've never seen anything like you, but that's no excuse to be rude. Definitely not. So if they've never seen anything like me, does that mean I'm the only person around here? Well, there is one other thing in the garden that can move around like you. She's very red, like a rose. I think I'll go look for her. Maybe she could show me around. Good luck. Alice said goodbye and began to walk away when she heard a very strange, very tiny sound. What's that? It sounds like it's coming from below my feet. You see the sign? Keep off the grass? Yeah, step off, Bigfoot. Oh, I'm sorry. Alice hopped off the grass and onto the stone path. I guess I'll have to be careful around here. Stones don't have feelings, do they? No, you're good. Okay, thanks. I'll just stick to the stones. Bye. Bow oh, wow. Alice walked along the path, looking for the red girl that Tiger Lily had described. There she is, <laughs> yoo-hoo, hello. Call me your majesty. I'm sorry, your majesty. Oh, you're the red queen, aren't you? But you were so tiny before. Don't you remember when I held you in my hand? You're talking nonsense. 
and you should curtsy when you see a queen. Right, um... Well, that was weird. Your Majesty, I was wondering if you could tell me how to get up that hill? Come with me. The queen began to run and Alice followed, but soon she realized they were just running in circles. Faster, 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 faster. I'm getting dizzy. Faster, and stop. Ugh. I've never felt so dizzy and wobbly and whoa. Are you thirsty? Here, have a cookie. Alice took the cookie just to be polite, even though she knew it would only make her thirstier. Better? Mm, I'm still thirsty, but... Hey, we're on a hilltop. And look, the land is separated into perfect squares, just like a chessboard. I want to play. Just move from square to square. If you get lost, ask a knight for help. And if you see the king, be sure to curtsy. I will. Thanks. <laughs> and just like that, the Red Queen was gone, as if she had been picked up and placed elsewhere. I forgot to ask if she found her kitten. Oh well, time to go play. <laughs> Let's go on another adventure. Come on. Chapter three, here we go. Wiggle, snap, story time. If this is all a big game of chess, I wonder what piece I could be. Hmm, I would like to be a queen, naturally. <laughs> Queens can move anywhere on the board and go farther than any game pieces. <laughs> I definitely wouldn't want to be a pawn. They can only move one step at a time. <sighs> Boring. And they can only go forward. <laughs> Sometimes you just gotta go side to side. Like when you're line dancing. Or playing tennis. Hmm, I wonder why there are kings and queens in chess but no princes or princesses. Anyway, let's go see if there's anyone around who can tell me the rules of real life chess. Everything looks the same. <laughs> oh, but there's a train. Maybe that's how I get to the next square. All aboard. Wow, this is so fun. Ticket, please. I don't have a ticket. Ticket, please. I still don't have one. Just give him your ticket. Um, how about this? I got it from the Red Queen. Thank you, have a nice day. Why are you looking at me through binoculars? Is that better? Mm, I'm still confused. How about now? Have you lost your eyeglasses or something? <laughs> I never had any. I'm a butterfly. And nearly all butterflies are nearly blind. Oh. I didn't know. <laughs> a butterfly with eyeglasses. Who ever heard of such a thing? But you have. Never mind. Ticket, please. But I already gave you a cookie. Ticket, please. And I told you I don't have a ticket. Well, then, you must leave the train. You want me to jump? Go ahead and jump. Use your wings. Easy for you to say, Madam Butterfly. Oh, hmm. To stop train, pull here. Okay. <laughs> Gotta go. Bye. That is amazing. Oh, looks like I'm in a new chess square. Okay, where to next? Oh, <laughs> this way to the house of Tweedledum and Tweedledee. Hey, I've heard of them before. They're in a nursery rhyme. <laughs> oh, <laughs> hi Tweedledee. Hi Tweedledum. <laughs> If you're here for our autographs, don't bother. We don't have a pen. And we don't know how to write. Oh, well, that's all right. I just came to say hello. <laughs> I'm just wandering around this place, and you're the first people I actually know. Well, you know what I mean. <laughs> From the nursery rhyme? That's all made-up pretend stuff. It's just silly. Wait, how does it go again? Allow me. <laughs> Tweedledum and Tweedledee agreed to have a battle. Not true. For Tweedledum said Tweedledee had spoiled his nice new rattle. Oh, I never even had a rattle. Just then flew down a monstrous crow, ah! as black as the tar barrel. I've never even seen a crow round these parts. Which frightened both the heroes so, they quite forgot their quarrel. And we don't get frightened, because we are so very brave. Crow! Oh wait, brother, that's just a little butterfly. Phew, we're safe. <laughs> that was hilarious. Good thing you guys are so brave. So you like poems and rhymes, huh? Yes, 
well, some poems. I didn't really get the one about the Jabberwocky with the Jub Jub birds and the Frabjous Joy and whatnot. <laughs> and I definitely did not like the one about the Knave of Hearts either. <laughs> long story. Oh, good idea. I'll read a long poem. Oh, I hope it's not too long. I should probably be going. Shh, Tweedledee, start the poem. Uh, 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 um. This is a really good poem, and Tweedledee is amazing at reciting poetry. What's that, Tweedledum? I said you are amazing at reciting poetry, Tweedledee. Oh, thanks, Tweedledum. No problem, Tweedledee. Action! What? Oh, oh, yes. Finally. Shh. Ladies and gentlemen, Tweedledee and Tweedledum Productions present The Walrus and the Carpenter. Let's go on another adventure. Come on. Chapter four, here we go. Wiggle, snap, story time. The Walrus and the Carpenter. The sun was shining on the sea, shining with all his might. And this was odd because it was the middle of the night. That's right, I do whatever I want. Alice. You be the moon. Okay. Yes, it's very rude of the sun to come and spoil my fun. The sea was wet as wet can be. The sands were dry as dry. You could not see a cloud because no cloud was in the sky. No birds were flying overhead. There were no birds to fly. Not even any scary crows. Ah! Thank goodness for that. Okay, now you guys be the walrus and the carpenter. Okay. <laughs> Wow, that is so cool. If all this sand were only cleared away, it would be grand. Hello, oysters, come and walk with us. I do beseech a pleasant walk, a pleasant talk along the briny beach. Four young oysters hurried up, all eager for the treat. Their coats were brushed, their faces washed, their shoes were clean and neat. And this was odd because, you know, they hadn't any feet. Four other oysters followed them, and yet another four. And thick and fast they came at last, and more, and more, and more, all hopping through the frothy waves, all scrambling to the shore. A loaf of bread is what we chiefly need. Now if you're ready, oysters dear, we begin to feed. But not on us, the oysters cried, turning a little blue. After such kindness, that would be an awful thing to do. Oh no, I just remembered, at the end, the walrus and the carpenter eat all the oysters. <gasps> Poor little oysters. Yes, and it's especially sad because I don't think oysters are very tasty. You're spoiling my poem. Maybe we should change it to be about peanut butter and jelly sandwiches. Okay. Sounds good to me. Now let's get back to the poem. <laughs> Whoa, this place is crazy. Oh, oysters. <gasps> I mean PB and J's. You've had a pleasant run. Shall we be trotting home again? And their answer, there was none. And that was not odd because they'd eaten every one. The end. See, much better that we changed it to peanut butter and jelly sandwiches. <laughs> hey, I think it's gonna rain. Not under here. Hey, what's this? Why, it's a rattle, just like your nursery rhyme. And it's spoiled. It's just an old rattle, Tweedledum. Get over it. No, it's not old. It was brand new, Tweedledee. And you spoiled it. I thought you said that nursery rhyme about you was all made up. <laughs> prepare to battle, Tweedledee. No, you prepare to battle, Tweedledum. I think I know how this ends. Just like the nursery rhyme. <laughs> it was so nice to meet you, Tweedledum and Tweedledee. I'll just be going now. Okay. We really are brave. Right. I know. <laughs> See ya. Hey, it's the White Queen. Alice, I've been looking everywhere for you. Let's go on another adventure. Come on. Chapter five. Here we go. Wiggle, snap, story time. I've been looking everywhere for you. For me? Uh-oh. Did I do something wrong? Not yet. Huh? What will I do? I'm not yet sure, but you certainly will do something wrong at some point. Oh no, I hope not. Anyway, I needed to find you because there is a bee on my face and I can't swat it away. 
Alice looked and looked, but she just didn't see a bee on the White Queen's face at all. Your Majesty, there's no bee on your face. But there will be a bee, and when it is there, I will need you to swat it off. You want me to swat a bee off your face in case a bee lands on your face later? Yes, except a bee will land on my face. You can see the future? Wow, that's so cool. What's my future? Am I gonna marry a prince? Or have a high-powered job in a major law firm? Or finally learn how to play a trumpet? Aw, that's so sweet. You're a silly girl. I don't see the future. I just remember the future. How can you remember something that hasn't happened yet? In the looking glass, time doesn't work the same way. You silly folks on your side of the glass can only remember backwards. But in the looking glass, you can remember backwards and forwards. That doesn't make sense to me. We are like a swing going back and forth and up and down. But your world is like a slide. You can only remember things one way. And sure enough, while the White Queen explained this to Alice, a bee landed on her face. Your Majesty, a bee has landed on your face! Exactly as I remembered. Hold still while I swat it away. Ah! Oh, Alice, that hurts. I haven't done anything yet. But you will. You will slap me to get the bee away and it will hurt. Shame on you. <sighs> I'm just gonna go with this. Sorry, I just can't seem to figure out what is considered right and wrong here. The looking glass is a strange place. As Alice turned back around to face the White Queen, she found that the Queen was no longer a queen at all. Whoa, this place is crazy. <laughs> Your Majesty, did you turn into a sheep? <laughs> I'm sorry, I don't speak sheep. Ba, 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 ba. Ba, ba, ba. As Alice bawed back at the sheep, she realized that by speaking in its own language, she was able to understand what the sheep was saying. Ba. Yes, I own a shop just around the corner. Would you like to come see it? Ba. I wonder what they have here. I would love to buy an umbrella for the rain, or a crown for my head, or even a I heart looking glass t-shirt. <laughs> Bah. Oh, right. Bah. We have lots of things for sale. Actually, it's mostly soup. Would you like soup? Bah. Goose, where are the vegetable soups? Hey, we got them in the vegetable soup aisles. Of course, where else would they be? <laughs> Maybe I just shouldn't get anything today. I don't think I even brought my purse with me into the looking glass. Bah. Oh, I know. Do you know how to get to the next row of the chessboard? Nope. Oh, I know. I can find out how to get to the next part if I climb this tree. Maybe then I'll be high enough to see where I can go next. And so Alice hoisted herself onto the tree that housed the general store and climbed. She climbed higher and higher and higher and higher and refused to look down. It's okay, Alice. I've got this girl. Uh, work those arms. Uh, and don't look down. As Alice looked down, she noticed something peculiar. Even though she had been climbing for many minutes, she was no further off the ground than she had been before. What? No, that can't be. And yet, the general store and the knitting sheep were gone. Instead, she was in a different place. This place is so backwards. The queen turned into a sheep, which I could only understand if I bawed, and that crab was named Goose, and I have no idea where I am. Suddenly, Alice heard a peaceful voice from overhead. I know where you are, child. Who's that? You're almost to the next square. All you have to do is pass the gate of this wall up ahead. It's guarded by all the king's horses and all the king's men know, so be polite and be careful. You're a talking egg? Yeah, on top of that, I know a lot of languages. I can speak human, I can speak egg, I can speak looking glass, I can speak nonsense. I heard a poem today that was all nonsense. I didn't understand any of it. 
maybe I can help. My apologies, I never introduced myself. My name is Humpty Dumpty. Wait, you're Humpty Dumpty? As in the Humpty Dumpty? Oh my gosh, this is so cool. What do you think is gonna happen next? Let's go on another adventure, come on. Chapter six, here we go. Wiggle, snap, story time. So, you've heard my name before. Yes, you're really famous where I'm from. And there's a song about you and everything. <laughs> that sounds nice. Can you recite it to me? Of course. <clears throat> Humpty Dumpty sat on a wall. Humpty Dumpty had a great fall. All the king's horses and all the king's men couldn't put Humpty together again. <sighs> I would clap, but I don't have hands. That's okay. I hope it's just a silly rhyme and not a prophecy. My wall is my happy place. It keeps my chakras aligned. You sound like you're speaking nonsense again. Like that Jabberwocky poem I read earlier. I told you I'm fluent in nonsense. I can maybe help translate it for you. Wow, this is so fun. Yay! Do you remember how the entire Jabberwock poem went? Beware the Jabberwock, my son. The jaws that bite, the claws that catch. Beware the jub, -jub bird and the frimmiest bandersnatch. He took his vorpal sword in hand. Long time the maxim foe he sought. So rested he by the tum tum tree. The Jabberwock with eyes of flame came whiffling through the tulgy wood and burbled as he came. One, two, one, two, and through and through the vorpal blade went snicker snack. And hast thou slain the Jabberwock? Come to my arms, my beamish boy. Oh, frabjous day, kalu kale! He chortled in his joy. What a strange poem, but it makes perfect sense to me. Which part of that did you not understand? Long time the man's own foe he sought. What does that mean? Manxum is a combo of manly and buxom. Many of the words in this poem are created by putting existing words together and making a new word out of it. That's a portmanteau. Bless you. Now burbled, that must be bleeding, murmuring, and warbling all at once. What a multitasker. Respect. And frabjous? Fabulous and joyous, like all days should be. Wow, I guess the poem makes more sense when you think of it that way. I love poems. Can I recite one for you? Is it going to take a while? Well, I'll tell you the short version. <clears throat> well, I sent a message to the fish. Well, I told them this is what I wish. The little fishes of the sea, they sent an answer back to me. The little fish's answer was, we cannot do it, sir, because... Because why? That's the end of the poem. Ah. Well... That was pointless. I'm gonna go to the game. Bye, Humpty Dumpty. It's cool. Well, I can wait here for someone else to put me up right. Oh, it's open. That's easy enough. Whoa. How are they ever gonna get out of this one? Um, excuse me. Um, pardon me. Uh, coming through. Um, can I speak to your manager? That would be me. What are you doing? I'm drawing my memoir. Here's me as a baby making daisy chains in the garden. Here's me as a teenager listening to rock music. And here is me as a young man fighting a jabberwock. Oh, I've heard of that one. Good. Usually nobody's heard of it. I've heard of it. So that makes two people who know of my adventures now, you and nobody. What? Nobody isn't a person. Yes, he is. He's standing right there. There's nobody there. Exactly. See, you get it. You get me. Hello, King. Hello, my messengers. Who did you see on the road ahead? Nobody. That can't be right. Nobody is right here. We do have news, though. It's so peculiar that you both speak together at the exact same time. Thank you. We've been practicing a long time. We've got this routine down pat. That's very impressive. You humble us. This is merely a testament to what you can do with hard work and also a nearby dance studio to practice synchronizing it. Did we mention we also have a dancing routine? You did.
did not. Well, here goes nothing. That's not much of a dance. But it's choreographed perfectly. I guess that's true. Anyway, we came to tell you what's ahead. It appears there's a fight in the room. A fight? Oh no! Who's fighting? Them. Them? Oh, them. They're always fighting. It's very rude of them to fight. Oh, uh, can someone please explain to me what's going on here? We're sorry. We, we should have clarified. The them we are fighting is the lion and the unicorn. Whoa, a lion and a unicorn in the same place? <gasps> what are they fighting over? My crown. <gasps> Why are they fighting each other if you have the crown? They're not very smart. If you would like, we'll tell you all about them. Yes, please. What do you think is going to happen next? Let's go on another adventure. Come on. Chapter 7, here we go. Wiggle, snap, story time. I can't wait to hear all about the lion and the unicorn. We shall tell the tale. The lion and the unicorn were fighting for the crown. The lion beat the unicorn all around the town. Some gave them white bread, some gave them brown. Some gave them plum cake and drummed them out of town. So does the one that wins the fight win the crown? No, it's my crown. Come this way. And so Alice followed her new companions along the path until they came upon a small town. A huge crowd was gathered around the center of the town square. OMG, I love it. Check. Check. Now friends, let's take a break for refreshments. Bread for everyone. Bread isn't a great refreshment. There is also plum cake. Ooh. Ooh. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Oh, my stomach hurts. I feel like I'm too full to eat anything. You ate too much plum cake. But I didn't need any cake. Yes, but you will. And when you do, you will have eaten so much that you are full now. Oh, the rules of the looking glass are so annoying. That's it. I'm going to find the next square. So Alice walked away from her companions and soon found herself in a colorful forest filled with jujube -jub birds, tum-tum -tum trees, and a cute little duck. Yo. When out of nowhere appeared a figure, a white knight. I'm here to rescue you. Rescue me? From what? I don't know. I'm a white knight. That's just what I do. Oof, that's gotta hurt. Oh, are you okay? Of course. That's the only proper way to dismount a horse. I respectfully disagree. I will accompany you to the next square, but that's as far as I can go. That's fine. I don't mind your company. <laughs> Alice and the white knight walked through the colorful forest. Although the knight did keep falling off his horse and Alice did need to help him up several times. You're not very good at riding horses, I see. I'm the best rider there is in the looking glass. Hey, what's that you got there? It's something I invented. It's a pouch that I can keep sandwiches in, but unlike other pouches, it faces down so that the rain can't get in it. But if the opening is on the bottom, won't the sandwiches fall out? Yes, but it does keep the pouch dry. What's the point of carrying it if you can't put anything in it? But if I could put something in it, it would be dry. I think your invention needs some work. Have you invented anything else? Yes, I've invented something that keeps your hair from falling out. That is amazing! See, hair always falls out because it always hangs down, because of gravity. But if hair always hung up, then it wouldn't fall out because it would just fall up. I don't think that's how it works. And so you train your hair to grow around this stick so that your hair always falls up and never falls out. I don't think gravity is why people lose hair. Well, what is it then? Aging, stress. This is where I must leave you. Oh, thank you for walking me through the forest. I'll have to check out some of your inventions sometime. Before you go, may I tell you a poem? Sure, I guess. Is it a long one? I've heard a lot of poems today. <clears throat> This poem is called, I give thee all, I can no more. I tell thee everything I can, there's little to relate. I saw an aged man, a sitting on a gate. Who are you, aged man, I said, and how is it you live? 
and his answer tripped through my head like water through a sieve. He said I look for butterflies that sleep among the wheat. Hey, wake up! The poem's not over yet! Oh, sorry. You know what? I think I'd better go and get to the end of the chessboard. It's been a long day. Very well, then. Goodbye. I did it! I'm here! <laughs> Maybe they'll let me be queen now. <gasps> oh my gosh! What is that on my head? Kids, what do you think is gonna happen next? Let's go on another adventure. Come on! Chapter 8, here we go. Wiggle, snap, story time. Something's on my head. It's heavy. It's... it's... <gasps> A crown? I mean, a crown! I did it! I'm a queen now! <laughs> Alice was overcome with so much joy that she began dancing and talking to herself. What am I gonna do now that I'm queen? Oh, I guess I can drink tea and be friends with everyone and everyone will like me because I'm queen! And I can talk to anyone I want to, whenever I want. <laughs> and they'll say, hello, your majesty. And I'll say, please, your majesty was my mother's name. <laughs> That was so funny. She was having so much fun on her own, she didn't even notice when some familiar faces approached. I do say you are very silly. Are you talking to yourself? Queens don't talk to themselves. They talk to their subjects. Subjects? Yes. Tell this young lady to stop talking to herself. Stop, stop talking, talking to yourself. yourself. Thank you. Now, Red Queen, I would like to invite you to Alice's queen party this afternoon. You're throwing me a queen party? That's so fun. <laughs> oh, no, dear, you're throwing the party. We're just the guests. Oh, I like parties and I like throwing parties, but I don't like throwing parties without anyone telling me that I'm throwing a party. We just told you now. Your party is very soon. I hope you've prepared enough snacks for all of us. We love snacks. Peanut butter and jelly sandwiches that are cut into triangles. Oh no, how am I gonna do all this in just a few minutes? Um, oh, I have an idea. Subjects? Yes. Can you help me set up a party for myself? There must be PB&Js cut into triangles and lots of flowers like tiger lilies and daisies and butterflies and rattles and oysters and crabs and eggs and plum cake. Wow, that is so cool. Oh, oh dear. Watching all these subjects work makes me so oh, sleepy. Alice, can you sing me a lullaby? I would, but I'm afraid I don't know any lullabies. What a silly thing to be afraid of. I'm not afraid of that. I'm just saying that I don't know any. Here, I'll teach you one. hush a -bye, lady in Alice's lap. Till the feast's ready, we've time for a nap. When the feast's over, we'll go to the ball. Red Queen and White Queen and Alice and all. That was really nice. But the White Queen was already asleep. In fact, both queens had fallen asleep. <clears throat> Guys, I mean, uh, your majesties, <laughs> does this mean that the party's off? Queen Alice, Queen Alice, give us a speech, 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 speech. Speech? Oh dear, I didn't prepare anything. I hope I say something eloquent. Let's keep reading. Oh, looking glass creatures, quoth Alice, draw near. Tis an honor to see me, a favor to hear. Tis a privilege high to have dinner and tea, along with the Red Queen, the White Queen, and me. More! more. Speak more, more Queen Alice, Alice no pressure. Oh, wow, no pressure, huh? Being a queen sure is more work than I thought. Now really, dear, you're being very rude to your subjects. They want to hear you speak. Won't you satisfy them? I don't know what to say. I already said some words to them, or at least I think I did, and they want more from me. Being a queen means always having to give. But I wanna do what I want. You can still do that, although people may not like you as much. I thought being a queen would be more fun. That's preposterous. Just because we're the most powerful players in the game doesn't mean we can do anything. We can only move in eight directions, not infinitely. 
I want to move in infinite directions. I want to be able to go wherever I want on the chessboard. Well, you'll have to make your own way. But in the looking glass, you can either be a queen or you can be you. Never both. You decide who you want to be. How about that? Does a queen pull a tablecloth off of her tables? I bet not. Oh no. I already told you all, I don't speak nonsense. I don't understand the Jabberwocky poem or most of your other poems. I don't understand your rules or how time and memory works. The Looking Glass is such a strange place. I don't want to be queen. And at that moment, everything stopped. There was no fighting or arguing or queens and subjects. In fact, as Alice looked down, she realized she was sitting in the same chair she had been in before with her kittens in her lap. Wow, I wonder if that was real or a dream. You were in it and you were the red queen. She was a bit rude. And you were in it too. And you were the white queen. Actually, I didn't like her very much either. She snored too loud. Yeah, kind of like that, but like... Meow! I agree. Ooh, I disagree. The only thing I know for sure is that I don't think I'm very good at chess. All of you are doing just fine over there in the looking glass, but maybe that place is not for me. I don't want to remember things before they happen or feel full before I get to eat cake. I'm just... Alice. And you know what? I like being Alice. I don't need to be a queen. I just need to be me. That was such a great ending. Thanks for coming to Storytime. See you next time. Bye.